Hey folks, today is January the 23rd. It's currently 9-12 in the morning. I uh, flipped through my currency pairs and I saw this set up here. As you can see, three higher time frames, green. We got green here. We got our swing and signal dots here. So now we're waiting for our cloud to turn green and for this bar here to turn green. I didn't really see any other uh, potential opportunities, but we'll take a quick look here. We do have a swing and signal dot here, but this uh, just looks like a mess to me. I wouldn't want to jump in here. All right, so the swing and signal dot are three bars apart, which means we could have got entered. No, I wouldn't have entered on this bar. I would have had to have entered here at the close of that one. So that would have been a potential trade. All right, two higher time frames are red. We got the signal and swing dots right here, three bars apart. Definitely uh, everything is lined up properly. And on this one, we would have most likely entered right around here with a 15 pip stop. And actually, I suppose if I wanted to, I could go ahead and jump in this trade right now. We'll keep an eye on that one. All right, 42 seconds here. Let's see if this opens up green and if this changes to green. I'm just gonna keep an eye on this trade. All right, we are green. Let's go ahead and jump in. As you can see here, green bar, green here, swing in signal dot, green cloud. That's odd. There it is. I'm not sure why that happened. Let's make sure everything is lined up here. We've got 38 for a stop. Tell you what, let's go ahead and bump it up. We'll use 80 for our take profit, or a little less than 80. There it is. And I've decided to use the one to two risk to reward. One of the reasons I'm not jumping in this trade is because for us to do that, we could get a one to one here, most likely, but we'd have to get through this level of heavy support. So I'm not gonna take this on a one to two. But here, I don't really see any of those heavy uh, red shaded areas. So we'll watch this trade and see what happens with it. All right, we're about five minutes in. I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and I'll come back momentarily. Hey, folks, just wanted to give you guys another quick update. You can see here we're pushing up nicely. I also wanted to show you guys some of what's happening in the back office in the members area.
wow, that is really a heck of a push up. Everything lined up nicely. We'll see what it does. All right, Alex's uh, results for four days of trading. From what I can see here, his winners are much larger than his losses, so I'm sure he's in profit here nicely. You can see a lot of 40 and $30 losses here, and there's a 60 and there's an 80, but most of his wins are 220 and 229. 280, 299, I mean 244. So yeah, he's definitely uh winning more than he's losing. Let's see what the vendor had to say. Great job. One thing I noticed is that you're using a fixed lot size. Uh move that to percent base for better results. Am I entering too early? Just playing around practicing, and I took this trade in the Euro USD. It quickly reversed against me, bounced around my stop loss. Just took me out as I write this, actually. Anyhow, when I entered the HA histogram at RSI and HA cloud, raw green, let me see what he said. We had a triangle pattern before that entry that already broke. So I more think it's a late entry, but following, but followed the rules, so all okay. My suggestion is to try working on getting the continuation pattern first, then enter the trade. This way you're going to get the reason, get that reason for having a high probability trade. All right, so here we can see that his swing and signal dot were right on top of each other. He took the trade right here. Actually, I'm, let me see something, make that a little bigger. All right, so it turned green here. That was still green. I'm not sure about this trade. It looks like it was moving a little sideways for my taste, but it is what it is. All right, here's a trade from the 18th of January. All right, let's see what he's done here. He entered a couple on the 19th as well. 43, 92, 98, 60, 40. You can see his losses are uh, relatively small as well. So these individuals must be sticking to the one to two risk to reward ratio. I'm wondering if this would be a valid short trade, and if so, is this the correct entry candle? Let me see what uh, period he's trading on. All right, so he's trading on the one hour. All three higher time frames are red. Red here, red here. Everything definitely uh, looks good here. Let's see where he actually entered this trade. So if he entered here, had a stop here, profit target down here, I wonder if he showed us what happened. Let's scroll down and see. Not at all. All right, slightly stronger move caused by the news. I think it's slightly too far away from my taste. In case you enter slightly higher, let's say till 50 pips, I will be fine. Now, like you said, we have average daily move of 97 points. Great European open session trade, USD, Japanese yen. All right, so I'm assuming he's talking about this area here. Enter the short right here, and he was able to take that down to that level right there. Really nice move, really nice win. All right, I'm glad you made profit. Looks like you followed most of the rules. Check the distance between the swing and signal dot. I would like to have three to four candles distance top.
All right, so definitely some good stuff here. Signal X observation. Let's see what this individual had to say about Signal X. All right, nice AUD USD potential trade. And this is, I'm assuming, uh, what he noticed on the chart. All right, so it's showing a T2 pattern. Everything looks like a buy setup. All three higher time frames. I'm guessing this is the swing and signal dot. Let me see. One, two, three, four. So that would still be a, a tradable signal there. My only issue with this trade would be that we're right. Actually, we're actually still moving pretty sideways as well. And we're also right above or right below this level of resistance. Yep, exactly what you should be look. Yep, exactly what you should be look to get from your setups. Good job. I think you meant to say looking. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what's going on in the back office here. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I've shown you guys a lot of the charts before the 10th, so I'm trying to uh, not go any further back than the 11th here. All right, here's a short trade. And he didn't attach a chart. All right. All right, here's a 15 minute. All right, this flag had four legs and it broke after it broke the lower support line, correct? Still not sure how to count legs properly and when the flag actually starts with the first leg, does each leg have to reach from resistance to support to be counted as a valid leg? Or can they also be just in between these two flag lines without touching upper and lower lines? Missed this trade since I was waiting for the fifth leg somehow. Difficult to see and confirm when it actually is a breakout that continues when expecting another leg. Thanks. Let's see what he's talking about here. All right, so he was expecting a short. Everything's lined up for the short. We have signal and swing dots right here. We got the cloud right here that is turned red. And as he stated, he uh, missed this trade, but it looks like it would have been a nice winner. Actually, that looks to be about one to one, so it wouldn't have been a winner yet, but definitely close. All right, let me shut that down. Euro GBP 15 minute. So the market, it looks like, pushed into that green level to this area of support and bounced right back out of it. Let's see if it continues to do that. All right, in 15 minutes, we have Euro Consumer Confidence. That's what uh, that noise was about that we just heard. Nothing at this point that should uh, hinder our GBP Japanese yen trade. We'll just let that continue to uh, push along. Hopefully, we'll be able to get past this level. And actually, now that I look at it, this level here has been touched at least four times. So this might give us a little bit of an issue as well. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on that and see if the market can break that level. All right, let me pause this so this video doesn't uh, get too long. We're already at about 15 minutes. Be back momentarily. Almost forgot to mention, if you're not able to actually see the charts in the uh, members area, you can go incognito or you can simply clear your uh, cookies in cash. That's what Jersey Jackie 100 told me to do and it worked uh, perfectly. I'm not sure why. Well, actually, I know why now. So I just wanted to pass that little bit of information on to you guys. All right. Be back momentarily. All right, folks, I've just been going through the uh, members area here. And I clicked on week six, and it looks like we have something new here. Indicator pack, including watch list, quick trader, alert dots. Let me uh, go back to week. Actually, that's showing week five. That says week five up there. I'm not sure why. Because we should be showing week six. Let me see if this shows week six here. 
That's showing week seven. So that means for some reason we skipped week six. Let me see what week five shows. Download Signal X cheat sheet. I've already done that. All right, so maybe week six is just uh, an addition to week five where they give us uh, further indicators. All right, so that should be STM watch list, quick trader, and alert dots. I'm not familiar with what any of that is, so let's see if we can pull something up. Give me one moment, folks. All right, I tried to uh, download that information of those products here, so let's see if they came up here. So STM watch list. Here it is, STM watch list. Let's go ahead and drag this over here. Lower left chart corner. That's convenient. And let's see what this looks like here. All right. Close chart, send to watch list. There should be one more STM alert RH. Here it is here. Let's see what this does. Status on. All right, so we do have a few new items, as you guys can see. I'm going to have to go through uh, some of the training here to actually see what we're supposed to be using them for. It might be that we have a user's manual, so I'll go through that, and I'll come back in a moment. Actually, I can check right now. Templates, indicators, STM, alert, RHEXE. Nope. So you probably went over that in a webinar. I'm going to have to look into that. Be back momentarily. All right, guys. It looks like we also uh, downloaded an expert advisor called the STM Quick Trader. I'm going through the PowerPoint presentation from the previous webinar, and it has a lot of the uh, stats and details that I'm going to be using, so I'm going to continue to go through that. Actually, I think that's pretty much everything. All right, let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so Quick Trader, it looks like it's doing something here. As you can see here, it's showing exactly what it's doing. Same exact thing. Let's watch it and see what it's supposed to do. And as far as uh, this here and this here, it looks like the next webinar does talk about that. So he does mention what we're supposed to be doing with all of these uh, things. And a lot of it looks like it has to do with the patterns and Signal X. And as I stated, I'm not actually adding Signal X to it, so I'm not going to go too deep into that. But I'm just trying to show you guys the new indicators that are being added as they get added. So we'll continue to watch it, and I'll be back momentarily. Let's check in our trade here. Looks like we're getting a bit of a pullback. It'll most likely come back to the cloud, and hopefully we'll get another nice push up. All right, be back.